Coming up in this episode of the KitCast, add some wonder struts to your wall, a cart for the photographer on the go, and use your soul to wirelessly charge on the go. All that more coming up, so sit back and relax. It's time for the KitCast. Hey everybody, it is time for the KitCast, the podcast where we go out and find crowdfunding projects and let you know if you should backtrack or sack them. I am one half of the show, KT Data, and unfortunately, Drew is out there taking a young or a group of young minds out to Video Summit so they can step up their video skills in California. Um, so he's not here today, but we have an awesome friend, an awesome friend of the show. Um, I would say con partner and con consultant for life, the one and only Dito. How are you doing today, my friend? I was going to say, like, Drew is taking kids out to where and doing what? <laughs> He's a professor. <laughs> they're, they're going oh, to know. a video convention. Oh, I know, but this is Drew we're speaking of. He's trust Corrupting the young, that's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> He's inspiring the minds out there. Uh, or, or something we like to try, I think we do. <laughs> yeah. So, Maybe. welcome, my friend. And bef- before we go on, have you built that RX-79 that we... <laughs> Both ended up buying. Oh, you, mean, you mean this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't even see it. Oh, you. Uh, it's, it's right there. Uh, it's on my oh, stack it, of stuff it, over it's, here. It's on the to do stack. It's on the to do stack. That's always. Good. Oh, it really is yeah. my to do stack. Yeah. So if you guys are big into Gundam models and stuff, Dito is the man to go talk to because he knows how to assemble them, but he also knows how to trick them out to the next level. Because I think I saw you building another unicorn Gundam. Oh yeah, the RG, the real grade. Yeah. I still only have like with the head, arms, and backpack and weapons to still finish, yeah. and I've been. And, yeah. <laughs> and are you gonna stick electronics and whatnot into it too? Is that the version oh, that has that? If, if I could, yeah. If I had the, if I can just get the LEDs and everything, so if I could, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> Oh, I got all the wiring for it. That's just fair. Too, that's, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> all right. So if this is your first time watching the show, first of all, welcome. And before we jump into our project tonight, and we have some awesome projects tonight. I'm excited that this was one of those weeks when you prepared the show that it was hard to cut projects. And that's always a good sign. Um, but before we do that, we have a couple pieces of news to go over. Um the first one, this is something that a lot of people don't think of when they are making their projects, is how they are going to package it. And that actually is kind of snowballs other th- other things that may happen because if you package it and m- build a box too big, your shipping is going to be more expensive. You're spending more money on that packaging than you need, and it just may not be that efficient. Um, so Kickstarter actually posted a guest blog post by... Um, uh, Je- uh, Jesse Janae, I think that's how you say her name, where she actually talks about how you can pick d- or how to design packaging and stuff. So what happened to her story is she actually f- started a line of light sensitive ink kits on Kickstarter and got a couple um, successful campaigns. And the thing was she would she ran into this issue of not knowing to pick the, how to pick the right packaging and how to get shipping and everything working. So she actually shifted her company and that's what they do now is they help Kickstarter projects and other people design their own packaging and help them determine the most efficient way of shipping because that can actually eat up a lot of your money. I mean, there's been multiple times I've seen like, oh yeah, you know, we undercharge for shipping so we had to eat that cost. Um, and what's great about this is if you go to the blog post um, Jenny actually ma- has made a couple different uh, different videos that you can watch on how to do packaging all the way to the shipping. So like there's one about making a packaging budget, choosing the right packaging, and plan for shipping costs. So you can go there and see all her videos and the likes of that. Um, Dito, have you ever run into that where you, you back a Kickstarter project and then you hear, oh crap, we didn't plan for all the shipping. And especially when you start getting internationally, when you have to ship to Europe and other countries and stuff, that becomes a big factor, right? (laughs) Well, let's see. There was the uh, the white box with the orange company that when they first started, they had the same issue. Um, There was the the cat ear headphones. They had the same issue too. Um, The current one now for the sort of online uh, board game, they had the same issue too. Um, yeah, it's, it seems like the first time that anyone starts their uh, campaign and gets successful backing, packaging and shipping has been the biggest issue because of either, like KT said, uh, their packaging's too big or they 
uh, didn't compensate correctly for the overseas shipping or the prices kind of uh, went up during that time frame because, you know, we did have a big uh, was it EMS uh, upgrade or EMS uh, increase what, just last year or so. Yeah. So Postage like overseas nuts, shipping. Man. Don't you remember the days oh, yeah. when you can mail an envelope for 25 cents? What is it now? Like, I, what? what is I, I don't, don't even know. know. I, I, I got the forever <laughs> stamp, so I don't even know. <laughs> I just remember, I remember like uh, the days of like, if you need to ship or need to like send a letter to like, say, family across the valley or something, how they get it in the same, like they basically get it within 24 hours. Now it takes them like two days. Yeah. And, and I mean, you've shipped a lot of stuff too, right? Selling things. It, God, it, it yeah. it's, it's tricky just being able to like get the boxes to fit sometimes. And sometimes you'll have like, you know, something that's really small, but the box is huge and you can't find a shipping container that really works. Oh, no, it's well for not it. even that. No, honestly, it's not even that. The biggest issue really comes down to a lot of people don't realize is that it is not just the size, but it's the weight sometimes. You know, so that no, if you if, say like someone orders uh, like two, like we'll, just, we'll put this in perspective too, like the uh, board game, like a, a board game that sits about what, like uh, 12 inches by seven inches like by four inches deep or so but if it weighs a lot too shipping does also count account for the weight too once yeah. it actually gets to a certain point yeah and, and it, especially it's internationally yeah it's deceiving with board games too because you're thinking well it's just cardboard right and like plastic pieces how heavy are they in that way and then you pick up one of these board game boxes and you feel like you almost broke your back <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, it's, if anyone's ever uh, played some of these newer board games that came out, self, they have so much stuff into itself. It looks so small, looks so like, oh, this can be a lot too. Until you pick it up, it's like, yeah. whoa, what yeah. the? Yeah, until you see the sign it. that says that it's a two-person lift, and you gotta, you know, lift with your legs to get a movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> it so, sounds like a demolition. Yeah, every everybody in in the chat room says it's forty-nine cents to mail an envelope. Um, that's good to know because I I really don't know because like I'm like you, <laughs> I, I have the either. forever stamp, so I'm like. Let's stick one of these on. So that's good. Exactly. Um, so if you are planning on making a project or just shipping in general, I would highly suggest to go check out this Kickstarter blog post. It will be in our show notes um, and go watch those videos. Though, And I'll tell you, those videos are really well produced too and entertaining. So um, I highly suggest you check that out. So speaking of entertaining things, this is an <laughs> interesting thing. So entrepreneur, <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> Media and Indiegogo have made their own show it is called entrepreneur elevator pitch and the idea is um they stick somebody in an elevator it takes 60 seconds from that elevator for, um, to go from the bottom floor all the way up to the boardroom and in that 60 seconds they have time to do a pitch to the to the um four entrepreneurs that are in the boardroom and if the entrepreneurs like them they can sit, have them open the door and they can talk and negotiate terms on investing they have five minutes to actually make this decision too or if they don't like it they can send the person down the elevator um and what's great is every elevator pitch is actually on indiegogo so say the entrepreneurs didn't like it you still can go back it on indiegogo so that's a little bit of advertisement and stuff you can get from there um it has actually a pretty good show um it's an online show it goes for about 13 minutes is the first episode. I watched the first episode and it's actually pretty good because what happens is the entrepreneur, sometimes they don't plan on investing, but they still want to talk to um, the people that are in the elevator. Like there's one lady, they loved her attitude and personality. They weren't too sold on the product, but they actually invited her to talk to her and she was asking for, like she was going to give up like 30% of her or 25% of her company for uh or 30% of a company for 30 grand which that's a bad idea that's so much of your company you're giving away for so little amount of money and they actually talked her down from that so they ended up giving her 25 grand for uh 20% of the company so all four of the board mm. members got 5% each which you know I think is still better but they you know they just love the lady's attitude and stuff where you know they were like this is this is where you should be in your business sense so i kind of like that show and i also like the idea of that you even if they don't get an investment from these board members they can you you can go to Indie, indiegogo and you know submit to their crowdfunding project so how, how do you feel about this concept of a show idea dito oh it's brilliant um you don't 
anyone here who knows what KT and I do for cons and everything stuff, we literally go up to everyone's self and just like, give us your elevator pitch. We literally say that to almost every person itself just to see if we can you know, talk to a few of them and bring you guys the latest and greatest and we keep on producing from the show. And this is perfect for that. I think it's a great way to get people to think like, you know, you only have so much you can say to someone self because in 60 seconds because i mean yeah, in 60, 60 seconds. seconds and it's 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 hard you know it is really hard to produ- to put everything you're trying to show to uh to people in 60 seconds and make it sound interesting so i think it's a great idea to show have a show that just kind of has people to think about it a little bit more it's like uh what are the key points of your products what is it going what are you trying to uh what's your target to consumer or your target audience you know how are you going to make it sound sellable um what was it the there was something on the kickstarter too where it's like they don't they give you 30 seconds to uh if they don't like your your intro video in 30 seconds if they just swipe it away and that's it you know this is the same thing you know, it's, you got to learn how to put everything up at, up front and everything. And, you know, it's like afterwards, so let's talk details, you know? Yeah, so I, I really like it. And so you guys should go check out the shows and you can go check out the projects. What's interesting is some of these projects where they actually liked them, you go to their Indiegogo, it is like entirely the opposite where they're like almost raising no money versus everybody else who has the investment. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I, I like it. I think it drops every Wednesday, so make sure you guys go check it out. And I, you know, I just like the fact that there's a show about cr- crowdfunding essentially <laughs> on TV because yeah. that's why we have this show is because we love crowdfunding. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love to hear people's elevator pitch, to be perfectly honest. Like, you know, can you, can you snag us? Can you, 60 seconds, can you snag us? You know, then afterwards or so, we we may still actually talk about it. Or there's that one we had about the board game itself. We, they just had sit down and both of us were playing superhero board game and, you know, we enjoyed it. <laughs> yep. All right. So now it is time for our kick shouts, which are our Twitter length shout outs. If you guys have a project you want us to mention on the show, just email us kickcast at ktdata.net or at ktdata at kickcast or at night 20. Send us your elevator pitch. Make sure you include the link to the project so we can link it out. And in 140 characters or less, you know, send send us your pitch. And, you know, since Twitter's doubling it, go for the 280 if you can. Um, so <laughs> our, 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 pro- our first project tonight is called the, I think it's called the Kind 6. It is the world's first customizable smart heating jacket. All you got to do is set the temperature of your desire to your desired level with one finger. Choose where you want the heat and the jacket will do the rest. Um, seems kind of cool. So you guys can check out them on Kickstarter. Just search for K-I-N-E-S-I-X, Kind6. All right, so for our next kick shout, um, we actually covered these guys way back when when they did the first Kickstarter, and I think we talked to them too at one of the CESs. So we have the Go Sun Go, boil water, cook meals, go anywhere. So it is a solar cooker heater thing that is portable. Um, so it's solar cooking in the clouds and cold, no problem. Breakthrough technology that's fast, reliable, and fuel-free. Two pounds of endless fuel. This thing is actually pretty cool. It's like their bigger version except portable, and I love it. So you can go boil water and stuff when you're camping. So you can find. I those. remember these guys. Yep. You can find these guys on Kickstarter. Just search for the Go Sun Go. All right, Dito. It is time for us to actually go into our projects. And <laughs> this first one. I saw it. It was so cool. I showed everybody else in the Slack channel, and they also thought it was so cool. So it just made super sense to put it in. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work for your or my house because we have zero wall space. But if we did, uh, I would uh. totally. <laughs> if if we did, I totally would have this. So our first project of the night is called the Wonderstrucks. And it's make your own marble masterpieces. So, Dito, have you kind of seen those? Uh, is it is it Rube? Yeah, Rube Goldberg machines where you just have like marbles traveling all over the place, and they're just doing cool stuff. Um, yeah, and then you see a lot well, of the latest one was like photography one, where it's like going through and like using all the different type of photography equipment to do the rules, uh, rules Goldberg, and taking shots and everything itself. Yeah, it's. This stuff's fun. Yeah. I think that it is great. So this, just imagine that where you can put it on your wall. And this is, is, it's a fully like, it's almost like a Lego kit for Marvel tracks. So it comes with all these different wood pieces 
and you can design your own Marvel track where you can throw stuff around. There's even like a little lift pulley system that can actually lift your marbles all the way to the top and kind of keep it cycling and stuff. It is super, super cool. Um, and it's actually pretty ingenious how they mount it to the wall. So on they have these little um, like uh, circle pegs where um, all the pieces can magnetically connect to. I wonder if, so you can see in the picture, you see those little round dots on the wall. That's actually how you attach it to the wall. And one side has the 3M tape where you can just pull the tab and then it releases itself from the wall. And the other uh, other side has a magnet, which is where the actual um, pieces connect to it. And then you can just build your sculpture however you want. They have like windy, you know, pieces that wind around. They have straight pieces. They have um, like a cone type thing for it. They have a pulley system. Um, they, they have like this tipping arm, which is pretty cool. Um, that can move all the stuff around. Oh, uh, they call it the bowl. This thing is cool. It's a little like, uh, if you live in Utah, the Kennecott copper mine. This is what it reminds me of. Um, it reminds me of a toilet. <laughs> and so like <laughs> you can build all of it. So it comes in, I, I think they're, it comes in flat pack. And then all you need to do to assemble the some of these pieces is get some wood glue, set them together. And then you have this like fully sturdy system that your kids and stuff can use. And it's just, I just think this is so cool to make your own Marvel tracks because I've I've seen in the stores where you can buy little ones and they're, you know, they're like, the Marvel track is like fits on your table and stuff. This is on your wall. So you could like design it, put it on your wall. And when people come over, they can actually play with it, interact with it. Um, and the, the guy who created it uses it a lot for kind of uh, projects and creations for ki- for his kids so they can kind of learn how to, stay creative and stuff so dito what what do you think about this idea of kind of making your own marble track wall well i think we'd break it first <laughs> but um i've seen these over in the uh was it the, the hotel uh with the little america hotel they have something similar to that over there but but you can't for... have that in your house right because they're like <laughs> giant installations yeah, but it's a, that's a smaller scale versus the one that they have here. Um, if you, I say, if you are into engineering or you like to, or big Lego builder and everything, and likes the rules, rules Goldberg. I think you're saying that correctly. Rules Goldberg thing. Yeah, I find it interesting. I actually do like it, but like we've said before, <laughs> None of a, neither of us have wall, wall space. space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, you know. Oh, but it, I, it, it strikes good to me because I, I'm a model builder. You know, model building, uh, I do customization, stuff like that too. So, and I'm pretty sure that the imagination, it, you're limited to your imagination, you know. So, build it how you want. I, and I'm pretty sure you can get multiple ones to sell, make it even bigger, probably do like seven tracks of marbles all at the same yeah, time. I think it was like 11 oh. by 9 is the, sp- 11 feet by 9 feet is how the, how many little round circle spaces that you can actually build? Oh yeah, well, that's but a lot. If you think about it, if you think about itself, uh, imagination is the only thing that's limiting you. So you know, they suggest this is what you do itself, but you're gonna have these like crazy people out there. So grab like twenty of these things and just using pieces they need and design this like elaborate thirty foot, you know, artwork. Yeah, and what's great Never about know. yeah, what's great about it is once you know you're bored of it, you can remix it and create something else, <laughs> like. That's what I love about it and that system and just being able to not having to permanently affix it to the wall. Um, I'm I mean, I'm seeing geeks going crazy for this too, especially someone that just has this, oh, what was it? Um, there was an autistic guy who built his own marble, his own marble farm or something like that too, that does, sim- that does exactly stuff like this too, but on a huge, like 20, 20 foot yard scale or something like that too. I can't remember. So I just did a, or I read a brief thing about this, like through a news clip and everything, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. And it's just this elaborate thing like that. But the only difference was, you know, there is more, more stationary opposed to ones you can rebuild. Yeah. So is, is this a backtrack or sack for you? Definitely track. I definitely want to track this. Yeah. This, this one was a back for me. If I had kids, I would, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd hesitate in getting it. And just like setting up one of my kids' playrooms, just have one wall of just this where they can play with it. And, you know, the hilarious part is they're going to be short and they'll be like, Daddy, Daddy, help me with the top. So they'll need me still, right? First off, <laughs> I, I won't go into that. You already know what I'm going to say. We've known each other too long and you already know what I'm going to say. 
<laughs> you're gonna think i'm gonna play more with it than the kids um so <laughs> all right well first off having a kid this the that's what i'm just getting at <laughs> it's possible one day i'll be a youtube star and then i'll find mrs R- mrs R- mrs kt data out there um but so it's so, data yeah so so that's kind of our play time if you so kind of going on to our next project um you know you and i you, you guys know the production side of of doing a lot of these shows and stuff is something i enjoy as much as i love doing the show uh, that's why we do it one of the you know our next project is definitely one of those things that um can be helpful especially when we're going on location and doing like a studio shoot and stuff where i'm not in the studio like I the more I do remote things, the more I appreciate that I have my studio here and I have everything set, so I can just jump, you know, literally jump in, turn on the power, and we're good to go. Um, but um, Dito, you know, you and I, we've done remote shoots before in you know, set up our kind of like faux studios or remote remote locations. And one of the things that we run into is that we have a lot of stuff, right? Um, we'll have like tons of cameras, we'll have light stands, we'll have tripods, we'll have a gazillion types of cables, like literally, yeah, a gazillion literally, types literally. <laughs> of cables around. And then the the problem I've always had with a lot of these systems or, or to do, and like, well, why don't you get a cart? So I'll tell you something. When I my main car is a family sedan car, I can't really fit a giant cart into them. Um, so our project tonight is called the Kiboka. I think that's how you say it. Um, I'm not from the Netherlands, nor do I speak Dutch. So I think that's how you say it. And it is actually a foldable camera gear cart, even though you could use it for other things um, other than camera gear. But what I like about it is it has these large, super large wheels and then the little tote thing that you see in the pictures if you're watching the um, video version. is it actually fo- It's a cloth foldable system that actually... You can fold down so it fits in your trunk easily, but when you fold it up, you can throw all the other stuff into it. Um, I really like it because of the giant wheels. Um, Because that way, no matter what terrain you go on, it doesn't get caught. I have a Pelican case that I use for a lot of our convention stuff, and it's good when you're in the city, but when you have to go places where like it's a dirt road and stuff, those wheels can actually get stuck a little bit. so it has a kind of big handle. It also comes with these straps, which is great because once you have everything in the little container thing full, you can put the lid on and then that way you throw your light stands and your tripods on stop, top so those don't take up space and it keeps everything secure. Um, and it's easily set up. So, I mean, you can see this animated GIF on how to set it up and it's pretty quick. A couple seconds, you know, 10 seconds at most and you're already ready to go for it. Um I, re- I really like it because it is always, I'm always looking for kind of a little cart. Like I have a hand cart and still I'm making multiple trips back to my car if I have a lot of gear with me. Um, so, you know, how do you, how do you feel about the, the Kibota, Boca, Kaiboka? <laughs> um, for me, I find utility because I don't have a lot of camera gear. Uh, most of you who actually follow up my stuff too knows that I do figure photography and I I don't have that much gear. But lately, I've been getting more. So future-wise, definitely good investment. The only downside I see about this too is like most camera gear, expensive. Uh, I mean, just yeah. the... Yeah, it is super expensive for what you're looking at here because you normally get a tote, you know, a little pull cart and everything itself costs you probably 50 bucks or so, maybe less, you know. But this one, starting out price, just the starting price is 399 euros. So that's what, close to 430 or 440 bucks for this system. Is it worth it? Yes, I actually do think it's worth it. the price, it being collapsible giant wheels like uh, kt sane and there's also a handbrake too so if you can just kind of so, yeah leave it doesn't there. roll away because i i mean you, you've seen some of those carts right where there's no <laughs> brakes on them so you're like trying to unload this thing and the cart's trying to run the opposite direction which is never good 
we've seen CES. We like people who leave it on the like the hills or the ramps and everything itself, and they just like go for a second or it starts to roll down. Yeah, you're like, ah. So yeah, it's like this thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment that they just left on their cart and everything, like you know, mics and cables and everything. So it just rolls down the shelf and it can just fall over any time. This one I do see being a more smaller scale of that too. So for people like KT and I that go remote. Yeah, I, I see that being very helpful for us to getting gear in quicker and set up faster. Yeah, so like I, I think this is perfect for somebody who has to load a lot of gear and move it to a, another set location, and you do that often. This, like, I think this fits perfectly. I I know there are some other cart systems out there that are that um that do similar things, um, but I think they're around the same price too, which is kind of. You know, and this one looks a lot nicer than the other ones because most of them you've seen them, right? You know, they're like metal oh, yeah. and square, and you know, you can tell it's a cart. Um, yeah, I, I've I've actually looked into this before because when I do some my my figure locations, my figure photography locations, I go up to like the Capitol and I go up that uh, the, that trail, but the dog park trail, and that's a that's kind of a that's kind of a climb, you know. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, you're not gonna run back to your car back and forth, right, to get all the stuff if you need it. You're, yeah, you're trying to huff it up with all of it in one go. Yeah, it's the only time I ever I because I, I have to carry what uh, tripods, my camera, backpack, uh, lights, stuff like that too. So I'm usually carrying anywhere between thirty five to sixty pounds of gear sometimes, and I'm huffing it up those up and down that <gasps> uh, that trail. <gasps> You know, and then there's going up the up the trail too. Something like this, you know, you don't have to worry about it as much. You're just basically pulling a what? Uh, probably the thing. How much this is it weighs again? I only think it, it said um, it weight. Um, I can't remember how much the weight was, but it wasn't that bad because those big wheels actually help a lot with that. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I would assume that the probably the thing doesn't weigh more than like maybe ten pounds, ten fifteen pounds maybe because it looks really light. Yeah. So. Um, where's that? Um, wait, wait. Uh, uh, it can hold up to fifty to seventy-five kilograms. Um, I don't okay. know. What, I don't know what that is in non-space points, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but we yeah. don't use metric. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that. I mean. Yeah. Is this, so? Is this a backtracker sack for you? Oh, this would be a back if I can afford it. Yeah, this is another back one because, like I said, it looks stylish, so you could have it around, and people might not think it's a cart, which is also good because getting stuff getting stolen is also another problem in our line of work. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's why we have the other the other uh, one for the uh, GPS system too that you can t you can tag all your stuff. So you know, there's those two things Just you can combine them. Things, put all those things together, and you'll be good. Um, yeah, why not? All right, so for our last project of the night, we didn't have a vote tonight. Um, if you're watching live, you may notice we are recording a little bit later. Um, yeah, that's, because of me. Well, it's a little bit of because of you, and it's a little bit of I'm going on a trip tomorrow, so I had to shuffle things around. Um, so our last project of the night, this I think is going to be a market that is going to grow and grow more. It's been out for a while, but now with the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 coming out that support it, I think you're going to get a lot more pickup than it has been previous years. So. Dito, I can't even remember what phone you have anymore. You have the five, don't you? The one plus five? No, one plus three. Three? Okay. Um, so this one, if you have an iPhone eight or I think some of the Samsung Galaxies have it and stuff, um, you probably have heard of wireless charging, um, where you don't have to plug in your phone, you just set it on a plate or something, and it's going to charge automatically. So that's great if you're in a place that you can just drop down and plug into a wall. But if you're going to portable, you, most of the time, you're still going to have a cable, except for the Soul is the solution to this. It is a trackable wireless charger wallet where it has one of the pads in there and it has a built-in USB battery. So when you're walking along, what's great is you could be holding the charger and then you put the phone on top and it will be charging right there as you're walking. Um, or say you go to a restaurant and you know I show up and Dito shows up. Imagine a world where we both have wireless charging phones and he's like hey my battery's about to die i can just like hey just stick it on there and start charging um so th it's called the soul and it also has a gps tracker in it so if you walk too far away from it because i always i i'm always afraid that i'll lose my battery pack and that's what i love about having the cables because you can't really lose it because the cable's connected to it 
But if you have the the wallet, you might be able to walk away. So if you walk away, it actually will start dinging. And if you lose your phone and your wireless charger is nearby, you can actually use the wireless charger to find the phone, which is amazing. Um, and it pretty much just follows the la- mantra of the show where you could add Bluetooth to anything and probably crowdfund it. <laughs> and it is also a wallet. Um, and when I say a wallet, I mean more of a ladies style wallet because it's bigger, of course, since you got the battery pack in, in it. Um and it has a 600, uh, 6,000 milliamp hour power battery. So that should charge most phones at least once. Um, and, you know, so like that's, I, I, I really like the idea of this. My only drawback to this is that it looks like a lady's wallet. Um, me being a male, you can get a lot of looks about that. <laughs> oh, come on, KT. It's not that bad. You can, you can. You can pull it off <laughs> um, being a lady. <laughs> but I don't know. What, what do you think about this? Like, because I know wireless charging. I think in the next two years, we're going to see almost every phone switch to that. Um, I'm sorry. Well, right now we have most of them that are. I mean, it was the i or not the iPhone, sorry. The, uh, Sa- the Galaxy 7S or 7 was mm-hmm. the first one of the galaxies to support the wireless charging. Um, and they're on out, too. None of the One Pluses do that. I don't even think the One Plus Five does it so right now. That's the thing is most some phones support it, but right now there's not a phone that actually comes with a wireless charger. Everything comes with a cable, and you have to buy the wireless charger separate. So that's oh, yeah. that's where I see like in the next one or two years that it's going to be less of you getting a cable and more of you getting just the wireless charger to go with it. Or, yeah, that's that's going to be the next big thing too. I mean, next to 8K, um, virtual reality, VR, augmented reality, we're going to have the wireless charging is going to be the next what we have um, two years. Yeah. yeah, next two years is going to be it's going to be common. It's going to be commonplace that no one's going to think twice about what was life like when we still had cables. They'd be like, you know, it's just kind of like when VHS it was still around. So we just like, what is that? Yeah. So so like do. do like if you had a phone that actually supported wireless charging, does this sound like something you would want to use, or would you still kind of go that traditional route and take your battery pack with the cable and then plug it in while you're on the go? Well, I always have that as backup too. But in for having an for owning a uh, seven, a Galaxy Seven at one point, yes, wireless charging is super super convenient. I just had the stand. I just put it at uh, the quick chan. Uh, sorry, quick stand, and I just put it on my desk and just got home put my phone on it and it charged it up left it there and my alarm went off itself I, I left i grabbed it it was super convenient super easy i think that more phones should have it and with this having a, a wallet that has it what's 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 not good about this i see no real downfalls aside being a lady's wallet yeah so like so is this a back <laughs> yeah is it back track or sack for you oh that's a back um, yeah, this one is a track for me just because I don't have a phone that supports it yet. But I do like how they're using the Qi standard, which is almost like every phone that does wireless charging uses the Qi standard, which is great. Um, and like if they had like a less of a version that looked less ladies wallet, <laughs> <laughs> like I think I would get it. Um, because I, you know, we were talking about my ability to, um, you know, to meet a girl, I don't think this is going to help me if I'm holding a wallet that looks like a lady's wallet because I'll probably get the perception of like, oh, sensitive. no, they'll just think I'm holding my girlfriend's wallet when I'm trying to find one. Just, 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 yeah, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> we will put, put it, do have the outside camo. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I like everything about it, just the looks, and maybe that's. Maybe that's a sign that I'm superficial. Who knows? Um, email me if you guys think I'm superficial or if I'm onto something, right? <laughs> oh, hold on. Um, let's see. It's, it's, KT it's, Data. Kick, no. it's kickcast at ktdata.net, Dito, if you need to write that in. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to use your personal email. <laughs> All right. So now it is time for our sack of the week. Um, and this is, we, we try to find either. You know, sometimes we're not judging the project. Sometimes we're actually just judging how you did your campaign, um, usually your page, and that's usually where I have my gripe. So this one is called My Own Recording Studio. I have an innate gift for music. I am able to sing, and I can even make beats as well as play a few instruments. Piano is my favorite. Um, 
So this is a project. You see a picture of the dude. He wants fifty thousand dollars with sixty days to go. Um, and so about his project, I want to make my dream studio come to life. I want to bring a difference to the music industry. I want to help others along their paths from all walks of life. I believe I can bring most po- the most positivity through designing my music. I have many positive views on what the future could hold. I can make everything a lot better with music. I captivate others with my melody and rhythm. I don't need a lot donated, just a lot of people to come together with small donations. I can make this happen. Um, and then the risks and challenges. This is a, he- a price heavy project. There are no risks. I have to find the build. I just have to find the building location. Um, so I actually, you know, I like the idea um, that this guy wants to build a studio and stuff, but I have a problem with this project. First of all, <laughs> if he's a musician and he loves music and music is his life, put some samples of your music on here so we can feel more connected to you. Um, and second of all, construction is a lot harder than that. And project management and you like i don't have you know you want to build this recording studio but there's really not any solidified plans i don't know how the studio is looking what you're looking to put into the studio um and what you plan on doing with the studio that's always another thing because i i've backed other studios um i've backed lone tree recordings but that was that that studio was made by the lead singer of yellow card who has been a professional musician for over 20 years you know he had an idea i mean there in fact yellow card's last album was recorded in that studio and he had a long-term plan he also said he's going to be recording a album for it which he's doing right now in the studio um and it kind of shows you this night and day difference where one you don't have a video and two i don't know what you're looking to put in the studio whereas the other one he's like yeah we're gonna have a booth here we're gonna have this we're gonna have amps we're gonna try to get people in uh this is how we you know mix and record all the stuff but this one just doesn't have any of them. It just says, I can do stuff. Please give me 50 grand. Um, or am I reading this wrong, Tito? No, that's exactly what it would sound like. Reading it to me is just like going, okay, I'm not going to judge the guy based upon his review and what he's trying to pitch himself as. But yes, put samples. Give us an idea of what you're trying to do. Yeah, give me a give blueprint us, of the us, studio that you want to yeah. look because that's fifty thousand know, dollars. That's a lot of money. That is, that is a lot of money, and not to mention too, you know, how do we know you're even good if without samples or maybe even just a link to like your YouTube or something? You know, just something or like it's just show like here's my here's my instruments. Here's my here's here's my here's what I have to use for a studio. So like KT said, we feel more connected to you that we want to help you. I mean, you know, we're a crowdfunding, not a charity program. Yeah. Like, like, um, it's, it's just, it's kind of just nuts where like I've told people Kickstarter is no longer that place where you can just put a project that you're passionate about and people will come. It is, it has grown way, way past that. It's gotten to the point where that you need to engage. You need to tell your story. You need to connect with your audience. And you also have to have your own following before Kickstarter and then bring it over to Kickstarter. And if you have your following does, you know, helps you, will boost you, you could actually grow while you're on Kickstarter, but you still need that kind of initial growth. And if you look at his project, he hasn't raised any money at all. Um, and, you know, that may be reflective of, all the you know all all the stuff's like if you have that and you know rev makes points like i can make music too give me 50 50 grand um you gotta you gotta prove it and you got you, you gotta work with it and i think you know because people still think it's that if you put it they will come it's it's you're when you put up a crowdfunding project now you're going to be ad- adding another job so if you work two jobs guess what with the crowdfunding project active crowdfunding project you have three jobs you can ask anybody who has actually done a crowdfunding project before, and they will tell you the same, that it's a full-time job in itself. Um, and but, you get even less sleep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, because I do like his idea. I Like, you and I, Dito, I think we're, we're fans of music. Um, I know how to play a couple instruments, too, so I, I understand the importance of that, but I need, you know... You got to, a lot of the times, you can't just be in that idea phase. You got to have something more concrete um, than that in your project. So, like, if I were to, you know, 
talked with this guy. I'm like, all right, so this is what we got to do. Like, what does, what's your plan? Do you even have mock-ups or sketches on what your building looks like? Um, the one positive I do like about his project is he actually has rewards that, you know, may be enticing to people. If, if you could back it up, like for $5, you get half an hour free recording time. Um, you, you have to go to the studio, but you get it to record for half an hour for free or three beats to use in the studio. He'll help you design the beats and stuff like this stuff actually kind of sounds useful. Um, if I could trust you a little bit more, or you could, you know, <laughs> show me your, your, your experience and how, you know, if that could apply, you know, just show the equipment, just to show that's even, or just put a list of stuff that you own, you know, like KT can put a spreadsheet together of all the equipment he has and they'll sound very enticing. Yeah, you, know, or, or, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't even yeah. have to give me specific equipment. Just say, I, you know, I'm trying to get enough so I can have a, you know, a full rock band in there or a five piece orchestra or something like that, you know? But with this, it's just a studio that could mean anything. I mean, I have a studio and it's in my house. <laughs> you know, if, and it's like, that doesn't same thing. It's like, I, I don't even, I have a makeshift workplace, you know, it's like, you know, my desk is here. My computer is here. You know, I have a, a mic stand, my camera there. So and I have a work table over here for my models. It's just like, you know, but you could call I, that a workshop. Yeah. And it's like I'm working to get my basement set up so that I can start doing more stuff down there so that I can actually start painting in the house instead of going outside. But it's the it's same thing. It's cold in Utah. Winter, winter shows up and it's cold. Yeah. Winter <laughs> shows up and painting outside just goes literally out the window. <laughs> it's just, you know, you just, you can't. It, you're, it's just anyone, anyone who knows about painting knows painting in cold, big no no. Yep. So, and so that is the my own recording studio good luck man but i I just can't see it happening and unfortunately that is also the end of the show dito thank you so much for filling in for drew um and like you know you're awesome where should people kind of follow you and actually check out your figure process and your model and your photography with your models and stuff uh right now it's uh you can just check my instagram at ahoy baby uh, that's where I usually post most most of my uh, game stuff when I'm playing uh, phone games or when I'm doing my photography, um, what I'm eating, whatever stuff like that too. Or <laughs> you'll know when or, he's hanging out with me because then the food yeah. pictures start showing up. <laughs> yeah, but we have CES coming up, so you see lots of food pictures soon. Um, if you want to follow my photography, my figure photography, check me out on Facebook at Table Flip. Uh, table flip photography. Um, I usually post my stuff there too, but uh, I haven't been really shooting too much lately, just because work. I work a night job now, so I'm um, usually pretty tired by the time the weekend comes. Yep. So yeah, make sure you guys check it out. Um, I was talking to a couple of my friends the other day, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm, I really dig Dito's photos and stuff." So you guys should go check those out. Um, it's pretty awesome. And if you guys have any suggestions for our sacks of the week, our uh, uh, kick shouts or regular projects or news items, pretty much if you just want to talk to us at all, just shoot us an email, kickcast at ktdata.net or leave it on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash kickcast. Or you can tweet myself at ktdata, uh, Drew at night 20 or at kickcast for the show or even Ahoy Baby. And Deed will be like, I don't know why they send it to me, but he'll forward it on to me. <laughs> I'll get it. I, I, am, I always check my email. Um, so thank you guys so much. Our next episode, and hopefully Drew will be back. Um, if you guys don't know, Drew's actually, his documentary is actually pretty close to its premiere because he's going to have a premiere on November 1st, I believe. And I'm going to go down there. So our next episode should be October 24th. But uh, keep an eye out. We'll let you know if it is or is not because I, I know Drew's uh, getting close to doing all that stuff. But if you guys follow the ktdata.net, I will make sure I vlog the premiere and stuff so we can go see that because I'm super excited for him. Um, that was his trip down to Mozambique where they were doing a couple service projects and stuff. So that's super cool. Um, if you guys want the show notes and all that other stuff, make sure you guys head on over to kickcast.net um, and that will have all the show notes and everything. So Thank you so much for everybody watching. Dito, again, thank you so much for being on the show. And we'll see of all of you guys later. Bye.